the major variations which are created inside the body. And uh, if you have to remove all of these things, daily you have to enlighten your body immunity. There must be a daily practice. Today morning I have already told, there is a routinal practice. Second thing is a processive practice. Third thing is an upgradatory practice. If anybody properly doing this thing, they can get a very effective emergency practice. If somebody is not doing routinely or upgradingly or processively, immediately approaching a power or a process for the rescue, it won't help at all. Today I told Apat Kale Vahana At the time of your emergency or your problem, you cannot practice immediately bike driving or car driving or boating and you cannot escape. It is a normal practice to be practiced at a casual mode which will come for rescue. Today I have explained the same thing in the morning. Same thing I want to say. Every day, at least 10 minutes, whatever I told you in English, you think that and plan a process in your own language and style to God that these type of unwanted elements within my side which affects the cell cycle, cell relations, tissue adhesion and also interaction with the mother protective tissues of my body which is not cooperating with the DNA replication. That type of element, if you have more information, you can just think that my cancer must go away. That is entirely different. But if you know more about the cancer, if there is a wicked fellow, you have might have seen in films that there will be a lot of wicked fellows having made murder or something else. If the secret is known to somebody, immediately the person will be frightened on the vision of the person. Likewise, if you know more about the disease and also the disease causing enzymes and more you know about the curing factor that is your own inner light or spark of God, the more you know about two these things, the disease will be afraid of you instead of your fear towards the disease. So knowledge that reduces fear and that accelerates the gear and it makes you to reach at the utmost destination without any infallibility, without any fallibility. That is the greatness. So these are some of the explanations. These eight major Variability is created inside a body, has nothing to do with the so-called alcohol or tobacco or anything that. These things are additives, which we are going to say. These things are going to be additives for the already existing gene mutation or any program with you, your DNA, etc. Now we are having 10 therapies. We are having hundreds of therapies in our land. Touch therapy, thought therapy, thought processing therapy, transmission therapy, then cognitive therapy, conceptive therapy, then uh, imbalance therapy, immunity therapy, mutual transfer therapy, lot of therapies are there in Acharya Sisha and uh, Prohita procedures. In Vedas there are lot of Prohidas, lot of sacerdotal authorities and they claim that yes, I remove your disease. Nidravantu Bahir Bilam. Yes, I command your melodial concrete. Let the crude, deep-rooted, concentrated melodial team, let it come out of your body through urination or perspiration, or excretion, or vaporization, whatever it may be. So that is the command of Vedas. And the next time, no doubt, uh, we have to print through Sharada Jnana Pita some essential slokas, which they can do experimentally, but that is a dangerous experiment. They can at least go for the guidance with proper Vedic people who knows the accumulation and accentuation of the Vedic modules with which we exactly come at the real efficacy. Instead of being getting into the danger, thinking something and uh, <coughs> Rendering something for a different cause. So, you may think something, but if the accumulation and uh, that accentuation is different, whatever you may be thinking, it will represent a different idea, contrary to your desire and will. So, proper guidelines must be mentioned here. Ten therapies are there, ten process of treatment now we are doing. The major thing is surgery. Johnson, a very great surgeon and also a creative thinker, he told, a real and capable surgeon is not a person who successfully does it but tries to avoid it with his best skill. So if you know surgery and if you have a surgical knife, you must not be just cutting like vegetables or a butcher's chop. So we must not be doing that. The maximum way of, because whatever we remove from your body, we don't have that type of uh, the madhukari vidya without causing even a small fraction of pain or uncomfortable status to the pollens of a flower, the honeybee is capable of extracting, sucking the honey without causing even the most infinitesimal uneasiness to that of the pollens, not even the flower, pollens of uh, that much of treatment of a very much precisely targeted medication is not available in our science now. There is a targeted medical therapy is there, but they are not successful because each and every cell is interconnected. They are having internal connection, intra-connection and interconnectivity. So this type of things uh, by the modern medication, the surgery is the immediate work. 
immediately they will say that your life is in threat. Immediately you have to operate it within 24 hours. So this type of threat uh, makes them, prevents them from going for thinking of any alternative remedy. That much of perplexity is created. I don't say that it, it must be totally avoided. But I believe, or most probably it must be so, that 65% of the operations are preventable and unnecessary. That's my statement. There are a lot of other areas where amputation is done uh, at emergency. Those things we cannot just claim. If somebody is advised not to do that, then we must do that. So we cannot just uh, totally be blaming or accusing the process of surgery, but there are a lot of preventable surgeries. One is surgery, second is the radiation therapy. The ionic radiation which penetrates inside the body, that high power radiation, it may be either internal or even external radiation is there. That radiation immediately burns, immediately burns the cancerous cells and creates a possibility of hyper acceleration of the same cells to be reproduced again. That is a little different. That is radiation therapy. And the third thing is we have chemotherapy with uh, cytotoxins. What are cytotoxins? These cytotoxins are highly powerful chemical compounds which if injected inside, they totally burn these cancer cells. Though this chemotherapy is uh, very worse. Any person advocating the chemotherapy, they are doing for the reason that they can be relieved from the pain. It is an interim relief from the pain. It immediately results in hyperemetic sense, more vomiting, loss of hair, loss of appetite, the person being totally molten into just a skeleton. So it gives a very cruel way of life. So the post chemotherapeutic life is more cruel and clumsy. But still so many people are going after it because of the excruciating pain with which they cannot live. So this is the third thing, chemotherapy. Fourth thing is immunotherapy. It is by process of institutionalizing or installing a hyperimmune structure in cerebral body. There is only immune therapy. Then hormone therapy. Hormone therapy. By instituting hormones in cerebral body, which can redeem the hormonal imbalance and give you that benefit. Then uh, there is the angiogenesis, which is very famous, that is now recently coming. Then targeted therapy. Now in nanotechnology also, if you are sending some other medicine inside, that will totally ulcerate the passage. A nanoparticle of gold has been now tested in the Berkeley Research Institute and it went inside and that is very much useful for detecting the exact area, drug delivery, it is known as digital drug delivery and immediately there the person is medicated. So that type of uh, tip of that nanoparticle will consist of anti-cancer drugs. If anti-cancer drugs are orally given or injected or intravenously installed, that may harm everything and that may be diluted. So a cancer, uh, anti-cancer drug a cancer uh, resistant yeah, that is installed in a nanoparticle and by digital drug delivery that is sent inside. These things are now modernly very much available. Then now there is a, a symptomic study. It is known as symptomic study or symptomic control. If you understand the symptom, there is a process of control by which uh, so many lifestyle and habits are changed, by which cancer is treated. It is not a symptomic control. And we are having supplementary medicine and alternative medicine. Supplementary medicine is any medicine if a single medicine is incapable in cancer relief, a group of medications are available in the allopathy. That is not a supplementary medicine. Now let us come to alternative medicine. We have wonderful medicines in uh, our Ayurveda. And uh, I want to say something. There are two major sciences. One is known as pharmacokinetics. Second is known as pharmacodynamics. The response of your drug to the medicine and response of the medicine to the drug respectively. This is what we call pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics. We cannot just say that I can cure cancer. Where is the cancer seated? What is the history or stage of the cancer? What is the food habit or the general salubrity level of the patient? And what is the drug response of the patient to that body? And if there is any imbalance all of these things, how much you can upgrade and compensate? Your capability of upgradation and competition. If you see that now, the Ayurveda is more than enough for treating 50% of the cancer patients. Among all the cancer patients, 50% can be cured. Number two, even in case of advanced stages, 25% of the people, they can be cured. They are taking into very highly effective and volatile substances. There are a lot of things. One is known as Hiraka Bhasma. Second is known as Vajrabhraga Rasayana. In the Rasayana Shastra, Hiraka, you know diamond. Diamond by means of an alchemic process that is 